My dearly beloved in Christ, today's gospel for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany has several applications. We could apply it to the church that the large field is the, the church and that the individual uh, seedlings that are planted by the workers could symbolize the members of the church, but it also could symbolize the truths of faith. And then the enemy comes at nighttime and sows the weeds, or as other translations have it, the cockle or the tares, different kind of weeds in the fields. And then as the good seed grows up, so also do the weeds. And the householder, the owner of the farm, tells the servants, wait until harvest and then you can separate the good seed from the bad, the good fruit from the weeds. And so we could compare those weeds to the various heresies down through the history of the church that have been sown by an enemy. As it says in the Gospel, an enemy has done this. And while the various heretics that have sown error among the faithful would be numerous, ultimately behind them is the, the arch enemy of our salvation, Lucifer himself, Satan and his demons who seek to undermine the faith of the faithful. So that's one application. But the manner in which I would like to take this gospel today is particularly to apply it to the individual soul so that our soul, more or less, is like the field or the garden. And God, by His grace, plants the good seed in us. All of the graces we have received in our lives, all of the inspirations, all of the um, teachings of our faith and the guidance of the Holy Ghost and the actual graces we've received, all of this is like the good seed. And then the enemy comes and sows the weeds. So the weeds would come from the world about us, the bad examples we see, the bad teachers, the bad influence that we cannot seem to get completely away from in this world. But then there are also the weeds that are not planted by an enemy. They just spring up of themselves. And we all know this if you have gardened before. You plant the garden. You're very careful to till the soil and you plant the seeds. And weeds just grow up. Even though they were not planted by an enemy. So that would symbolize our fallen human nature. That we have these tendencies within us that are a result of the sin of Adam and Eve that we all inherited. And even though it be washed away in baptism, the sin, original sin, we have those inclinations to evil. And so that would be like all of these weeds. So notice that the farmer says that the weeds, they, they are not to try and root out the weeds, because if they do, they might root out the good plants as well. And that indicates that we cannot completely conquer our passions, our fallen human nature. Rather, we have to keep it in check. It would be good if we could completely eliminate the sources of temptation within us. The pride, envy, anger, lust, gluttony, sloth, covetousness, the various capital sins that are the results of original sin. But we will never be able to weed them out entirely. What we can do is control them. Control these passions by grace, by discipline, and especially by what our Lord says. How are we to conquer temptations? What did our Lord say to his apostles? He said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Watchfulness, or in other word, vigilance and prayer. Those are the two remedies that our Lord primarily gives us. Watchfulness or vigilance means that we are on the lookout. We are observant of the tendencies of our fallen human nature and the various temptations that come from the world 
about us and from the devil and from ourselves. We're vigilant, watchfulness. We're on our guard, in other words. And we always must preserve that humble conviction that we are weak and we are very liable to fall. So that is fundamental, that humble attitude, that realization of our weakness and that every day is a battle. We are subject to that warfare for our souls. So that's the vigilance part of it. What about the prayer? The prayer would include all forms of prayer. First and foremost, the sacraments, which are such a tremendous source of grace. And let us make certain that we do not fail to make use of frequent confession and, of course, Holy Communion, devout Holy Communion, but not to neglect the sacraments, which are such a powerful source of grace. In addition to the sacraments, we have prayer. We have formal prayer, like praying the rosary, praying our morning and night prayers, praying novenas, praying various prayers. But then there are also the informal prayers, the ejaculations, the simple prayers, like my Jesus mercy, my mother, my confidence. Those short prayers are so valuable. And you can make up your own. You can say, Jesus and Mary, help me. Help me to conquer this temptation, and so forth. So we must not fail to make use of prayer. Now today we celebrate the feast of a saint who lived many centuries ago. Saint Scholastica was the sister of Saint Benedict. And some authors believe that she was his twin sister. At any rate, Saint Benedict founded the famous Abbey of Monte Cassino in central Italy, south of Rome. And it's on a, on a mountain. So he founded up on top of this mountain a monastery for monks. His sister, Scholastica, founded a convent for women at the base of the mountain. And every year, St. Benedict would journey down the mountain with several companions and visit the convent and visit his sister. And he would speak to her about spiritual things. And you can imagine how she looked forward to meeting up with her brother, who had such a fame of holiness, and listening to these words of grace from his mouth, explaining about the faith and about heaven and so forth, how she longed for these visits. Well, one year, after St. Benedict had visited her for several hours, he was preparing to leave, and she begged him to stay longer. And the reason is she had a presentiment that that would be the last time she would see him. And he said to her, my sister, it is impossible that I stay longer. A monk cannot stay outside his monastery overnight. And it's getting late in the afternoon. And I must depart now to go up the mountain to reach the monastery before nightfall. And she simply put her face in her hands and began to pray that somehow God would provide that her brother would stay to speak longer about the things of God. And behold, what happened, a torrential downpour came, a storm that was so fierce that St. Benedict and his companions couldn't even set foot out of the convent building. And he said to her, <laughs> reproachfully, he said, my sister, what have you done? And she said, well, I asked you and you wouldn't listen. So I asked our Lord and he listened. And it is a good story of the power of prayer because God does listen to us. God does love us. And if he doesn't give us immediately what we want, it is because he knows what is for the good of our soul and there is perhaps something better. And let us remember that the spiritual graces are far more important than the temporal ones. So the final conclusion of that story is that St. Benedict had to stay and he conversed with her all night about spiritual things and in the morning went back to his monastery. And three days later she died and he saw her soul ascending into heaven in the form of a dove. And he followed her in death 40 days later. But the story told us by St. Gregory the Great, who himself had been a Benedictine monk and was around that time or the following century, um, 
actually later that same century that he wrote this, his dialogues, the story explains the value of prayer and the power of prayer. And so let us turn to our Lord, to our Blessed Mother, in every difficulty, in every need. And remember those words of our Lord, watch and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Watchfulness and prayer. Now, the Gospel talks about the wheat, or the good seed, and then the weeds, and that they both grow up together. And at harvest time, they are separated, reminding us of the judgment and how the wicked will be separated from the good. And the wicked, like the weeds, will be cast out to be burned. And the harvest of the good will be gathered into the Father's house. So let us persevere in our prayer, in our good works, in our watchfulness, aware that there always are the weeds, they always seem to crop up and we must be on our guard and make use of the means of grace available to us to not be influenced by these bad influences away from the practice of our faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.